Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Your Dennis Yugas win 12 round unanimous decision over Manny Pacquiao. Three scores, 115-113, and two scores of 116-112. Me watching it live, I'm in agreement with the judges, 116-112. Manny Pacquiao looked every bit his 42 years in there. There was moments of, there was glimpses of the old Pacquiao, especially early on, when he was letting them combinations go in the first round. But for me, I think it was a combination of age and the two years out of the ring for Manny Pacquiao because his judging distance seemed very off in this fight he was fighting in spurts so he was really only opening up on combinations he wasn't really looking for anything else especially early on but he was wasting a lot of shots because shots were either landing on Ugas's gloves there was I think the fifth or sixth round where Manny Pacquiao started throwing combinations while Ugas was on the ropes and the distance was all off because Manny Pacquiao wasn't even that he was landing on gloves. He just was hitting fresh air. And it just seemed like the judge's distance from Pacquiao in this fight was was just non that was just not there, it was non existent. He just seemingly didn't know how to close that distance. And your name is you guess, he's the as far as I'm aware, has Pacquiao ever fought a Cuban? Because your Danish you guess being, you know, a Cuban was a very, very good amateur. They see all these styles. They see everything. So for them, someone who is as quick as Manny Pacquiao, and he's still quick even at 42, who throws flurries, that's not new. They would have seen that, you know, in the amateurs because Gordanis Yugas, you know, he was Olympian many years ago in 2008, but nevertheless, he would have been around the block as an amateur with the Cuban, you know, system. So he would have seen all different kinds of styles. So for him, there was nothing in here that Pacquiao was doing that seemed to overarm. He was comfy from the get-go. I was actually quite surprised just how relaxed and how switched on your Dennis Ugas was just from the get-go. He wasn't overawed. He just did his thing. He didn't get drawn into a firefight. He was very disciplined. He kept his range very well. He's got significantly longer arms, was significantly bigger in every way to Manny Pacquiao in there and was able to just keep it at range. He was able to get his jab working over Manny Pacquiao's the amount of right hands he was landing, and again, I think this is another thing, a combination of age and lack of ring activity, was an overhand right that your Dennis Hugas was throwing that was landing, and you know, Manny Pacquiao kind of eye was swollen by the end of this fight. He was landing it consistently, and it just seemed like Manny Pacquiao, the reflexes weren't there to get out of the way of that shot. To me, it was almost like if this had been about three years ago, four years ago, if your Dennis Ugas was throwing that same shot, Manny Pacquiao would have been able to read that, get out of the way, or potentially even get inside and counter it. it wasn't there. No, it wasn't there. I heard people say, like, oh, on if this was Spence, how would it have gone? I think Spence would have done a similar job. I don't think Spence would have engaged Manny Pacquiao. I think when you look at the Keith Thurman fight, Keith Thurman had gained the reputation for being run time because he was running around the ring. But against Manny Pacquiao, he stood there, traded, and came at Manny Pacquiao. Now, if you do that against Manny Pacquiao, but you, now he's going to light you up. He is going to absolutely pepper you with shots, and you just don't want to do that. I think Spence would have done exactly the same as what your Dennis Ugas did. Kept it at range, not engaged. Try and make Manny Pacquiao work when he doesn't want to. And that was one thing as well that your Dennis Ugas was doing well. Two things. He was punching with Manny Pacquiao very well, but he was also making Manny Pacquiao work at times where I felt Manny Pacquiao didn't want to. You know, he would have, obviously Manny Pacquiao would have preferred it as you guys just to come at him, you know, and just have a little bit of a firefight so he wouldn't have to worry as much about, you know, trying to look for him, trying to use those 42-year-old legs to close down the ring, cut off the ring. And as you guys didn't mind that, he just kept it at range, landed some good shots. Manny Pacquiao was complaining about low blows early on. Now, Manny Pacquiao, I think your name you guys even pointed to it, that his fell protective was quite high. A lot of them shots didn't look low to me. They didn't. I think Manny Pacquiao from early on knew probably not going to be my night in there. There was definitely some swing rounds. There was rounds kind of like, you know, I think it was like the seventh round um, where it, it was close. You know, even late on, some of the rounds late on you would give to you guys, but they were close. Because there wasn't much happening. When you guys was winning, he was winning them clear. When 
Manny Pacquiao was winning in those swing rounds. They really were like that swing rounds where Pacquiao's combinations were looking good. Ugas was landing maybe two kind of eye-catching shots before the rest of the time wasn't doing much. But for sure, when the rounds Ugas was winning, he was winning them big. And I just feel as though Manny Pacquiao, when they were talking about him having a retirement fight, they were naming names like Conor McGregor and Mikey Garcia. I think both of them would have been better options. I think that he would have beaten Mikey. He definitely would have beaten Connor. Definitely. And I think that that was kind of an indication as to where Pacquiao was, maybe physically. Maybe they knew they didn't really have it to go in there with a top opponent. Then obviously we get the Errol Spence announcement, which didn't happen. Um, you know, Errol Spence has the eye injury. Ugas was announced then. And let's see if you could say, oh, no, Manny Pacquiao should beat Ugas. Yeah, younger Pacquiao probably would have beaten Ugas. Although saying that, from what I saw from Ugas there, and I've always been impressed with Ugas, you know that. I think Ugas would have always given Pacquiao problems, just based upon his style. Like they say, styles make fights. I think that Ugas keeping out of range, you know, being patient. I think Ugas, a younger Pacquiao, would have probably found a way to get through this. But I think Ugas has that style to always give Manny Pacquiao problems. In terms of what I think will happen now. I'd imagine that uh, PBC are going to be looking to get him in there with Spence, you know, you guys versus Spence unification. Whether when Spence will be back or not, we don't know because, look, people were saying that, oh, they felt that Manny Pacquiao was looking good in training, you know, Spence doesn't want this. Fight. Look, Spence, if they didn't want to take this fight, they would have, they would have tested positive for something. I'll just put it like that. In terms of training footage, I never take training footage at face value. I've seen so many fighters look good in training and look terrible in the ring. Example, Pavekin going into the Dylan White rematch, look great in training, look terrible in the ring. So I never take uh, training footage at face value. It's always what happens in the ring. Spence versus Ugas potentially next. As I said, those eye injuries could take a while to heal. Having said that, I wouldn't mind seeing the Porter rematch. I thought that Jordan Ugas was unlucky against Sean Porter the first time. Well, the only time. And here against Porter now, be an interesting fight. In terms of Manny Pacquiao, I think that look at this fight. I thought that we would see, we maybe have seen the end of Manny Pacquiao, maybe seen the last of him. Which is sad because I love Manny Pacquiao growing up. Love watching him. Always one of my favorite fighters to watch. And if he does announce his retirement, best believe I'll do a review of Manny Pacquiao's career because I think his career is one that deserves a hell of a fighter. But I just think that. I think Manny Pacquiao, a combination of age and inactivity, and I think that was really the telling factor in this fight, you know, as well as a style issue. I think Rodenis Ugas' style will always cause Manny Pacquiao problems. Excellent work from Rodenis Ugas. As I said, top five welterweight, definitely, and, you know, he showed that tonight. You know, for Manny Pacquiao to still be able to have relatively competitive fights with top five welterweights at this stage, it's a testament to him. So that's my thoughts on that. Let me know yours in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep it short and sweet. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. All that good stuff for the lads and lassies. I'll go get some sleep and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.